Hey, everybody. Welcome back to CAF's Heroes of Sport. My name is Bob Abbott, co-founder of Challenge Athletes Foundation. Every week, we get to spend some quality time with some of our amazing challenge athletes from around the world. Today is no different. Our next guest, Mr. Tavion Bryan, joins us getting ready to do the Million Dollar Challenge bike ride. Tavian, how are you? I'm doing pretty good. How's it going? Everything is wonderful. So you pretty excited about Million Dollar Challenge? I am, yeah. Actually, uh, this is the first year that I applied to do it, uh, but I had been thinking about it for several years before this. So take me back. Uh, what, what sports were you involved with, like grammar school, high school? What, what, what type of athlete were you? You know, honestly, uh, really wasn't involved in athletics too much throughout the high school experience. Um, junior high, I played a little high, I played a little basketball and then high school football for a little bit. Yeah. Uh, but not much on the athletic side, just personally, uh, I was involved in weightlifting uh, mm. quite a bit. Own. Uh, but in terms of team sports, not too much. So after high school graduation, 1995, you're in a car accident, get thrown from the car spinal cord injury, and we're talking 1995. There isn't a hell of a lot of awareness for adaptive sport at that point. What, for you, how did your, your obviously your life changes, you're in a, in a chair. How did you adapt to that? Yeah, you know, so uh, the healing process, uh, mentally, physically, was probably about eight months or so for me, just trying to work my way through, figuring out how to live life in the wheelchair and, and let my body heal up. Yes. And then after that, you know, I just kind of made a decision to jump back into life. And so during that, the next 25 years, husband, father, teacher, competitive hand cyclist. So you, you basically embraced life and decided, hey, I can't control what I can't control. I just want, I need to move forward. Yeah, within the first year, uh, I was working on getting my old job back. Um, I also enrolled in a junior college to try to get a college degree. I just kind of believed that that would be the way that I'd be able to take care of myself um, and make a life for myself. And then from there, uh, ended up getting a teaching credential along the way. Uh, you know, I met my wife, ended up getting married. And so I had all these things I was trying to figure out at the same time, which kind of made it tough for me to focus on the bike. So I bought a hand cycle pretty early on uh, after my injury, but I was just you know, figuring out so many things in life, I really didn't have so much time to ride it. I rode right. it every now and then, but it really wasn't a focus at that time. Well, and also when you think about the equipment back then and the equipment now, I mean, a hand cyclist, the hand cycle, cycle, cycle that you're dealing with back then is probably 30 plus pounds compared to what you're riding now. How much has equipment changed during that time? It's changed a lot. Um, I've, I've had uh, two or three uh, hand cycles since then. And the first one that I had was very heavy. Uh, it was uh, not a very comfortable design to sit in. And so, yeah, it just, you know, it's, it's changed a lot. They're, they're lighter. They're, they're more aerodynamic. The position is, is more reclined. Uh, it's just a much more comfortable uh, sport to adapt to uh, than it was uh, earlier in the earlier days for sure. So you were hand cycling around the neighborhoods and you're doing marathons and wasn't there a point where you're going you're going to do 40 marathons? Yeah so basically what happened was I just wanted a way to challenge myself uh, physically and mentally. Uh, I found myself riding around the neighborhood um, and getting a little bit stronger and get a little bit faster so I was convinced that uh, maybe I should try a few more marathons. And once I did, uh, the field had grown from the first time that I tried one and it was more competitive um, and it was a lot of fun. Uh, and I found myself in a position where I could, you know, meet other guys in chairs and compete with them. Uh, and I had a lot of fun doing it. And so I started doing a few more and then friends and family and some of my students, you know, started talking to me about it. And then that's where the goal kind of came about where, you know, I just felt like it was a number that I could reach over time, uh, but also a number that would challenge me. Uh, and I was looking for a challenge at that time. How has have things changed for people in wheelchairs in, in the time since you were first injured? It just seemed like it was at that point back in 95, 96, there wasn't a lot of awareness. Uh, I'm sure there was a lot of inaccessibility in terms of buildings, in terms of just getting places. How have things improved? 
for people in chairs during that time? Yeah, you know, from, from my understanding, what I see is just a lot more accessibility, um, you know, whether it's a, a grade on a hill in a parking lot or accessible parks itself um, or businesses being, um, you know, meeting the code, the accessibility code more often. Also just uh, public transportation uh, sources. Uh, there seems to be a lot more accessibility in terms of us being able to, you know, enter various events uh, yeah. and also just uh, races um, or marathons and, and being accessible to us and having a category for us to compete in um, and things like that. It just seems like there's a bit more opportunity uh, out there for us to have uh, activities in which we can be active, you know, and participate. What's your favorite marathon? Uh, to be honest with you, uh, New York Marathon was really great the atmosphere and, and going through all the boroughs and Central Park. And uh, that is one uh, that I'll definitely never forget. Um, it's hard to put Boston behind that one. But at the same time, uh, when I did the Boston Marathon, it was a year where they had the, the worst weather pretty much in the history of the marathon. Gale force winds and, and snow to start and pouring rain all the way through. It's so so cool. Especially yeah. that first six miles where you're going downhill, cold, yeah. wet, all the stuff you don't want to be doing in a chair. Yeah, it was it was very difficult. I think I would have had, uh, don't get me wrong, it was a great experience. I was so glad to be in Boston, but the weather absolutely made it uh, a very uh, difficult experience. That is wild. Did Now, have you gotten the 40 marathons? Actually, um, you know, COVID slowed down, uh, slowed me down quite a bit. Um, they shut down marathons probably a year and a half or two yes, years. They They're just kind of starting up right now. So I've been stuck on 39 <laughs> for about a year and a half. So I'm looking forward to getting that last one in. Um, if I would have known, obviously, that COVID was coming and everything was going to shut down, I would have rushed it to get it done earlier. But nevertheless, I'm looking forward to number 40. Yes, I have one more to go. Well, and for the uh, Million Dollar Challenge, October 16th through 22nd, 640 miles, seven days. Uh, that's a little beyond a marathon, my friend. <laughs> it is. Yeah, it is. And I, I've been thinking about that quite a bit. Um, I'm definitely up for the challenge. Um, and I'm definitely considering pace because I think it's going to be, you know, a lot about pace and a lot about endurance. I mean, I've spent a lot of time you know, trying to maintain high speeds and be at a high intensity on the bike. And, and this is going to be a little bit different where, you know, I'm pacing myself over a longer distance and a longer period of time and, and a lot of climbing. So, you know, um, I have a coach uh, and he's helped me uh, pace myself and, and prepare for this. And we've trained for this. So, you know, I believe I'm ready to go. I love it. And so for the type of training, you've been doing some a lot of hill work, a lot of indoor stuff. What have you been doing? Yeah, so I, I, I've completed a lot of my training on Zwift. Um, and the so best. the area that I live in is kind of difficult for hills. Um, it's also very windy all the time. And if it's not, it, you know, it's also very hot. We had, uh, you know, over the summer, we had 60 days over 100 degrees. Where are you it's, living? Yeah, so I live in Lancaster, California. I live okay. out And so it... You know, the hot, the heat over the summer is very, very consistent. So, and then if it's not really, really hot, you know, we have 20 mile, mile an hour winds a lot. Oh, so, yeah. you know, plus on top of working, it makes it, it makes it difficult to find the balance. So Zwift seems to be the best way to especially get some hill work um, and kind of close to the real world without being out there, you know, so I've, I've got a lot of training in um, a lot of endurance rides, a lot of hill days. Um, and I, and I believe that, uh, that has prepared me for what's coming next. Zwift has been amazing just because you can, you can basically ride with the same guys who live all over the world together, yeah. right? You can go out and do your, and you could be on a hand cycle. They could be on a road, but it doesn't matter, right? It's just, you're just out there getting your workout in. Absolutely. Yes. I was introduced about a year and a half ago, uh, and it's really revolutionized my training. Um, it's, it's, you know, it's allowed me to uh, pull my weight all the time instead of being on a roller that has limited resistance. Um, it really allows you to enter your weight um, so that you can get a little bit of a more real feel um, in your workouts. So it's been great. That's awesome. And when did when did you connect with CAF? 
Um, I connected with uh, Cap probably about uh, a year and a half ago. So not really that long. Oh, fairly uh, new. Oh, yeah, I'm fairly new. Yeah, this is actually going to be uh, my first event. I guess it just so happens to be the biggest one. <laughs> way, to, way, to, way to go big. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and jump right in. No 5Ks for you. It's, I'm jumping in. Go 640 miles. No, yeah, I'm just going to go from the top. Uh, there's only down from here, right? So when you tell your family, yeah, I've been doing these marathons, but you know, I think I'm going to do this little, yeah, I'm going to be gone for about a week and I'm going to be doing 640 miles. What was the response? Yeah, my mom and my wife, my son, um, obviously they're all my biggest fans. Um, you know, uh, they tend to think I can do anything. Uh, so it's nice to have uh, folks in your corner that feel that way. Even sometimes when you wonder, uh, my mom, my wife, my son, they, they all said, go for it. I'm, I'm sure that you can do it. So um, even when I wonder about the 640 yes. miles for seven days, they're all just like, go for it. Uh, we know you can do it. So, uh, you know, once again, it's nice to have that in your corner, encouraging you. Um, I also shared it with my students and they're pretty excited uh, to hear about my progress and all the stories when I returned to school. So for you, you were so young when you were paralyzed. What was what was the lowest point for you being, I mean, right out of high school, your whole life in front of you, and then this happens and you have to readapt. What was the lowest point for you? Yeah, you know, the you know, one of the tough things, um, I was waiting until I was 18 and a half to uh, be able to pursue a career in law enforcement. Uh, that, that had been my dream since I was about seventh or eighth grade. And so the time came that I was finally uh, 18 and a half and I can kind of start that process, sign up to take my written test and, and move toward uh, trying to get into a police academy. Uh, I ultimately wanted to be a U.S. Marshal um, eventually. And so one of the things that was tough about you know, being injured was just the fact that, you know, I was no longer going to be able to chase that dream in the way that I wanted to. Yeah. And so that was kind of the one of the tougher parts uh, to just not be able to chase that career dream that I'd been looking forward to uh, for so many years and waiting for. Yeah. And, and, the, and the hard part is, is, you know, if, if you were to speak to that, that young man, you uh, now, and because I'm sure at that point, you're going, what is my life going to be? What, you know, this is my, my dreams are crushed in terms of going into the, being a policeman. Uh, what, what, what would you tell that the, your younger self? Yeah, you know, I, I would just say, keep living, um, you know, keep moving. Um, and, you know, circumstances are going to get better. Um, and, and, and ultimately, uh, there's going to be another path. I, I didn't know it at that time, but I ended up you know, the, these 25 years have been better than I ever could have imagined. Uh, at the time, uh, that was the thing that I wanted. But where I ended up was so much better than I ever could imagine it would it would be. So uh, I'd probably just tell them that, you know, there's another path and you don't see it yet, but there's another path and it's going to be just as great as the one uh, that you wanted to go down before. I love it. And you've got a 640 mile path coming up in about a week. <laughs> It'll take you that yeah. a week, just a couple of days. That's going to take you from San Francisco to, to San Diego. And I bet you're going to love every mile of it. It's, it's such a beautiful route. I'm, I'm really looking forward to the challenge. I've looked at the pictures before, and that's one of the things that got me excited about the ride. I'm also pretty pumped about just being a part of the group and have other people out there with me as we're all actively pursuing this and taking on this challenge within, you know, to have the energy of the entire group. I think it's going to be such a great thing. Love it. Tavian, thank you so much for taking time. Appreciate getting to know you a little bit and we'll, we'll see you at the finish line, if not before. Yeah, thank you. And I look forward to meeting with you uh, and talking to you in person. All right, Tavian Bryan has been our guest. He'll be doing Million Dollar Challenge coming up 640 miles, seven days. This is CAF's Heroes of Sport. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. We'll catch you next time. See ya.